Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Pluto Paint Fabrication. Well, we're right back on Project Ruby and today's project will be removing the filler panel between the back window and the trunk. Now, if you own a GMA body, uh, you know, Chevelle, GTO, Tempest, Le Mans, uh, Skylark, uh, a lot of them, uh, they rust out right here. And uh, I love GM cars, don't get me wrong, I think they're great, but they really screwed the pooch on this one. Uh, there is no place for that water to go. It just sits in a V back there and it has to evaporate basically. And you leave water sitting uh, over steel, I don't care how well you seal it, eventually it's gonna make its way through. And then you allow for you know, the silt and the you know, leaf litter and all the stuff that'll settle down underneath your molding. It turns into a big ball of goo down there and it hangs onto the water even longer and then it does rust out. So this one here is 56, 57 years old, it's the original, and it's, uh, it rusted all the way through. So it started draining itself, you know, just with a rust hole. So what we're gonna do today, I'm gonna work on uh, getting this panel off. And if you have to do it, I'll try to uh, show you where all the spot welds are and what you're gonna need to do to get it off. We also have the repot panel for it. We'll take a look at that. Uh, it didn't show up in that great a shape, uh, get a little shipping damage to it, but not too bad. And then, uh, then we're just going to get to work getting this thing removed and then start fitting up the new panel. So let's jump in and take a look at it. Okay, so here's the filler panel. And uh, you can tell right here, I mean, it's just done. I mean, it rusted all the way through. Now I've already cut this piece out and had it out because uh, we are also replacing the quarter panel on the driver's side. So I wanted to get in there and see what this inner structure piece looked like. And if it was rusted out, see if I needed to order that as well, or at least repair it, but it's not looking too bad. So I made a cut across here just to lift this out. And if you do the same thing, uh, make sure you cut as close as you can to the lip right here, you know, right where it starts onto this part. That way you make sure you clear any of the inner structure in here. I did nick that just a little bit, but I got it out and uh, actually the sheet metal underneath, the brace underneath looks really good. It's got some rust on it, but nothing, uh, nothing, you know, like this where you can poke your finger through. So it's going to be fine. And the number of spot welds, if you guys are doing this, I, uh, with this rusted out so bad, I barely had to work at it to get them to pop loose. But I think there was about 10 across there. So not, uh, not a ton of them. You know, like they'll do a wrong a pinch weld, they'll go every, you know, one inch or every two inches. They, they jumped across this whole thing with maybe 10 or 12. So uh, that's what you can expect. And if yours is rusted out like this, it's going to fall off anyway. So uh, that's what you can expect there. So what we're going to do today, now obviously this side is going up against the new quarter panel. So it's not going to be if you were just replacing the filler panel itself. But this side, the passenger side, it will be what we have. The sail panel is not getting changed out. So we're going to have to cut those spot welds underneath and then remove it. And then uh, the patch panel that came, it, uh, it came with it drops all the way down into the weather strip groove down here. Now this piece here is the same piece as this, okay? So this piece goes all the way underneath as a brace, then it comes back up underneath. So we have to bunch of spot welds along here to get out so we can lift this whole panel out. So let's, uh, let's go take a look at the repop panel I got and uh, kind of look at some of the damage and what you can expect if you order one. Uh, you know, they always come with some shipping damage, unfortunately. So let's, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the panel. And uh, it had the, the biggest shipping damage, really, which is the easiest to fix, is this corner is just curled right up. I mean, it was basically sticking out of the box, you know. And that's fairly easy to uh, bend back, and that goes right there anyway, so it's not a huge deal. The biggest issues I'm seeing... You can see that crease right there. See that crease? That's a little tougher to get out. We've got a ding right there. See the ding right there? Then we've got uh, one in the middle, kind of a line. And then there's one right there. See that one? And then there's one right up there. And there's, I think there's another one on here somewhere I just saw a minute ago. So. You get these things, they say right in the description, it's expected to have some dings and scratches. So you have to decide what is acceptable. 
If you, uh, you know, tell them, hey, I, re I refuse this, ship me another one, it could show up even worse. So uh, you're doing body work after all, so you have to figure that these panels are gonna come, especially these big flat ones, are gonna have a few dings and a few problems with it. So I don't really mind these little dings, I can take care of those. This crease right here is gonna be a little more difficult to get out and make it look good because of where it's at and you know the flatness of this panel. This is absolutely no big deal. I mean, I was gonna to have to hammer that down into that shape anyways. But for the price and how quickly they got it to me because I am under a time crunch to uh, get this done before it has to go in the trailer to go get dipped, um, it's acceptable. Now, I could have bought one for three times the cost of this one, and I'll tell you what, if it showed up in this condition, it would go back, you know, but for, I think I paid $85 for that piece right there. For 85 bucks, I'm not gonna complain too much. So we're gonna move on and start cutting spot welds, start identifying what we need to do to get the old one off so we can start test fitting this one. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is identify all the spot welds. And to do that, I'm just gonna use a small uh, wire wheel on an air tool. And we're gonna get in these areas right here because the piece does come out into there and we'll have to get some of the spot welds cut and then all the way down inside where the weather strip goes. So I'm just gonna kinda go through here and get this cleaned up the best I can, and then we can start uh, drilling out these spot welds and see if we can get this panel pop loose. Okay, got that cleaned up pretty good. Help me find all those spot welds. Can you see them down there? See a little shiny spot right there? There's the one there. And there's one there. So what, what I do is I just run my hand underneath and you can feel the little uh, dimple uh, poking up and then you look on this side and it helps you find them. Now I've taken a Sharpie and put a little dot on each one to kind of help me not get lost when I start working. But you can see one there and that, that, what that wire wheel does, since those stick up, that wire wheel kind of shines them up a little bit. But uh, you're just gonna have to find them all. That's the way it works. Now, I've taken a Sharpie also and marked the extent of the under brace. So this piece right here that rolls all the way underneath and goes all the way to the package tray right there. So that way I know where I'm at. So the, that stops right on this, this line right here. And uh, also, one of the toughest things you guys are gonna have to deal with is this brazing. They tend to braze you know, a lot of these corners and then they just put seam sealer over the top of it and call it good. Well, uh, this panel actually sits on top of the quarter panel. There's a little uh, recess right here. So you have to try to cut on the side you're getting rid of, try to weak it and break it away, and then you can probably get in here and grind all that away and not damage your quarter. Now we're, we're changing this side, so that's not that big a deal, but let's walk over to the other side. So you can see over here, no brazing, you know? There's some seam sealers still down inside there, but no brazing. So that, uh, this side is different from the other side. And they had different people, you know, one person on one side of the car, another person on the other side of the car. So you'll find the left and right side of your car is done totally different. So, and here's the rust hole if you guys haven't seen it yet. And I'll show you a picture of why this happened. So there's a, a brace up underneath here. And then uh, it's actually spot welded right into here and that helps hold this shape or something, I don't know. But they basically just glued that plate up underneath there. And what happened was when the window uh, channel failed right there, I think the water just kind of ran down and it followed the sheet metal and got up inside there and it just stayed like a pool and it rusted its way out. So we're gonna actually have to section this out and uh, put a new piece in here, but I won't do that till it comes back from being dipped. I'll see what the extent is, so we don't have to worry about that right now. Let me, uh, let me start drilling some of these spot welds and see if we can get those pop loose, and then we're gonna do some cutting uh, to relieve this panel from the sail panel. So I like to get the big chunk of metal out of the way and then uh, work with this much smaller piece. It's a lot easier to get in there. You can see what's going on and then uh, it's easier to handle. So let me get uh, some tools out and we're gonna start drilling out some of those spot welds. So I'm gonna go along and just start drilling all these out real quick and then we're gonna um, go all the way down. I'm gonna try to get all these prepped and then we're gonna cut this panel out of the way so we can get in and start working, breaking some of these uh, spot welds loose. So let me, uh, let me bust some of this out and then, uh, then we'll get the cutoff wheel and the grinder out and see what we can do.
And this thing is spring loaded if you haven't seen one before. So what happens is you get this down into that little dimple you just drilled. And these things like uh, lower speed, not super slow, but not wide open. Otherwise you just overheat them. And you kind of just stick it down in there. And I want to stay away from this lip. I don't want to chew it up. Walking around on me a little bit. Just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go down and get all these done. Get maybe some of these on the edge. I'll bring you back. And then we're going to cut this panel out of the way and see what it looks like underneath. Okay, I got as many spot welds as I could find. There's a gap in the middle. I'm quite sure I missed some. So what we're going to do is go ahead and cut the sheet metal away now. So I've got a line drawn right here, right where this panel just starts to roll up into the sail panel. I want to cut as close as possible to that. That's why, right where it's broke over. Then we can get in there and see those spot welds. So of course we've already cut out the front and uh, got that out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut along here. I don't have to cut the other side since uh, we've already cut it loose with the quarter panel work. And then I'm going to, I'd like to cut right down in this groove, right, right at that break, right down in there. But uh, what I'm going to do is end up scoring it and then try to bend the sheet metal and break it away because I don't want to cut into the brace. So I'm probably going to cut across here just to get this big chunk out of my way and then I can kind of grab a hold of that and then I'll get down inside there. It's one extra cut, but uh, you know, I like to play it safe. I don't want to have to repair something I cut into. So I'm going to make this cut this cut across here and probably a little cut needs to be made over there so I can take this panel and just kind of move it out of the way. So let me put the camera down and uh, speed through this real quick and we'll get this big chunk out of our way. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing out of here. That looks promising. All right. Not rusted underneath. Well, a few spots on the edges. Okay. Let me bring you in close. We'll take a look at what we got here. Okay, so here's that piece I was telling you about that was kind of sandwiched or just laying in between the two pieces of sheet metal. I don't know if that was for sound deadening or that panel, you know, would rattle or whatever. So I don't even know if I could get this material, but um, we're going to save it and I'm going to pull it off carefully. We'll set it aside. Um, what I might end up doing is using some sort of a panel, uh, like a flutter kit on here, like I did on that Chevy truck. And uh, that would be better probably than that material. So uh, we're going to have to figure that out. So what we got here is it's not too bad. It's just got a little bit of rust down in here and that's where that drained down inside. Luckily it drained out of that hole right there. But that's pretty solid right there and it's looking good. So here is where the uh, trunk hinge uh, bracket is spot welded on. And you can see we didn't cut that right there. That, that's where it stopped. So the sail panel connection was way over here. So you're safe to cut that away. And uh, let's walk around to the other side and we'll take a look. So here is the sail panel, uh, and here's where the brace, inner brace uh, stops. So by cutting it close to the sail panel, what that does, it gives us access to those spot welds from up here. Now maybe we can get a grinder down in here and grind those until they're nice and weak, and then get that to pry away. We're gonna figure that out. So actually see that little nipple right there? That's my attempt at making a drain. I drilled a hole in there and I glued some uh, nipples up on there to run hoses to help that drain, but obviously it was too late or didn't work. Uh, so we're gonna figure something out for the new panel so it drains. So right over here is our next step. Now I cut that away so we can get a hold of this piece and I wanna cut way down inside there. I wanna cut, but not all the way through and weaken it and then just take this piece and bend it back and forth till it snaps off. So let me grab the cutoff wheel and we'll get to that and so we can get this out of the way. Okay, I got it cut all along there. I cut right down through here. 
had to make two cuts over there because I cut too close and then this ear was in the way. So I just moved over where there's no ear for the uh, weather strip. And uh, I think we're about ready to try to get this thing off of here. Now, I went through in some spots, but I tried, there we go. I tried to just weaken it. There we go. Okay. Still a little warm there. Yeah, so we're already uh, looking pretty good. Some of these spot welds aren't holding and some of the others I drilled out are already popping loose. So that's looking really good. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you up close what we got going on here. Okay, so some of these popped right out, but see how this leaves us just a little strip to work with. See how that's bouncing up now? Look at that, we just popped one right there, just messed around with it. So that's why I cut the metal back so far. So you're only dealing with, what is that, a piece of 3 8 right there? And it's really easy to work with. But if this was still in there, we couldn't get down underneath it. We just couldn't access it very well. So, um, you know, it's, it's not looking bad. I mean, really, this should pop right up. I mean, look, they're just falling off. So the spot weld cutter is doing its job. And we're going to go ahead and go through here and try to pop all this off and uh, get something underneath there and see which ones are going to come up. And we'll just try to pull all this up. Then all we have to do is grind these little buttons off. Clean this up really nice and uh, we'll be looking pretty good. The next step will be getting these spot welds out, which is a little tougher obviously because we can't just access that like we did just now. So let me, let me get all these popped up real quick. I'll bring you back if any of them give me any kind of trouble. We do have spot welds over here that do need to be cut. So we need to work on that and we'll try to get this whole area taken care of before we move over here. Okay. I got um, all the sheet metal out of there, most of the other sheet metal off. I did not grind the buttons and I did not start cutting these spot welds right here because I realized this piece did not come with the little ears right here for uh, the weather strip to hold it around the corner here. It just stops at the bottom. And this piece here spot welds to the brace and then it spot welds over here to the quarter panel but it looks like it's all part of the factory original one right here that came all the way over. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna figure out somewhere to put a butt weld right here. Now, it's not always where you can get the welder, it's where you can get the grinder to grind your weld smooth when you're done. So I'm gonna kind of map it out in keeping that in mind. I have burr tools, one inch roll locks, I've got a lot of different tools. So, but you have to th think about how, how am I gonna grind that weld so it's not visible, it's all nice and smooth when I'm done. So that'll be, you know, one of our next steps. I still have to bend this back down and, you know, kind of mess with that. But this panel is actually looking pretty good. Left to right, it fits pretty good. I've got it pretty much lined up right here to here. It's not perfect. I mean, it still doesn't lay in there properly. We still have some sheet metal in the way, but over here it's looking pretty good as well. So I'm liking the way everything's fitting, you know, so I think this is gonna be a good panel to go in. So we're, uh, we're looking really good. We got the bulk of the old crap out of the way. Uh, and I've, I've decided that this panel is not going on until the car comes back from being acid dipped or stripped and then acid dipped. And the reason is all that rust up underneath there, that, uh, that little insulation panel and all that stuff, I wanna put uh, you know, some, a flutter kit or something back underneath there just like the factory did. And I want to seal that as, as just as well as possible because obviously this is a brush prone area i plan on putting drains in so it drains but i still want to do everything i can so what we're going to do is we're going to get this all prepped just like uh, you know just like i was going to weld it on there and then we'll get the quarter panel hung using this panel as our guide and then what we'll do is we'll get the quarter panel on and then this piece will be left off and when it goes to get dipped then all that will get super cleaned and we'll have that panel waiting uh, to go back on once that's done. Then we can spray uh, DTM sealers or whatever, all both sides, the whole deal, and it'll be extra protected. Um, you know, that way I think that's just the better way to go. And then uh, this, this has already been EDM dipped, so it's got protection on the other side, but I'll probably spray it again before I actually weld it on. So that's the plan right now. Next step I think is gonna be getting that, uh, that 
piece off of that sail panel where we cut it. So let's move over there and take a look at what we need to do. Okay, so I went through with the wire wheel and cleaned that up so I could find the spot welds and each one of these uh, little tick marks with a Sharpie is a spot weld, the ones I could find. So the problem is here, we can't get the drill at the proper angle to drill those spot welds out from the top and if you go from the bottom, you got the same problem. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take a grinder, uh, just a four and a half inch, five inch grinder at an angle and I'm just gonna try to grind at each one of these and weaken that all the way through, try to split it and just roll that up like a sardine can like we did the other spot weld. So that's really the best way I can find. I've got a burr tool, I could try to use a burr tool down in there, but I'm gonna try the grinder first and we're just gonna go along and just kind of you know rub it up against there on the edge of the grinding wheel and just kind of move it back and forth at each one of these tick marks, try to weaken that sheet metal right there and hopefully not going through because we do not want to go through the sail panel. We want that to stay as one solid piece with no holes in it. And then later we will actually be spot welding through the, uh, the new filler panel onto that from this side, so from underneath. So I want to keep that as uh, solid as possible. So let me uh, grab the grinder and see if I can't weaken that up a little bit. Okay, I was able to cut right here so I could get something and drive away from the sail panel to make it safer so I don't bend it up. And it, it's coming away. That's the uh, seam sealer right there. So we got this started. And that's kind of the hardest part right there. It's getting something started. Now I'm gonna grab it with the pliers and just try to twist it and kind of sardine can that. Oh, I don't want to go. There it goes. Nope. So we got it. It's split right there, but I can cut that and break that off later, but we're getting there. So I'm going to roll this all the way down. Uh, the best I can. Hopefully I didn't miss any. It may break off and we'll just start again, but this is a pretty good way of doing it without uh, bending up the, ba the, the base panel that you're trying to save. So I'm going to, can't get my head in there, I'll block the camera, but I'm going to go ahead and kind of mess with this a little bit, try to roll it all the way down, and I'll bring it back, see, what, uh, see how it turned out. Okay, there it is. Mangled mess. But we got it pretty clean. There's uh, just the buttons and some sheet metal. What I'll do is I'll just break that sheet metal off. I'll just bend it back and forth, just like that, and it'll just leave the button. And then uh, it's pretty easy to grind those buttons nice and smooth. So I'm just gonna go along here and get this. And that worked out pretty good. Doesn't look like I bent the uh, sail panel at all. Um, I'll go through and make sure it's nice and straight though. I got a little bit of here at the end to clean up and then it's about time to start grinding to clean this up. Get all this uh, seam sealer out of there and we're looking good. So let me finish getting this off. I'm going to grind it smooth and we'll take a final look at it. Okay, finished rolling that back and got all the buttons ground down and hit it with a roll lock disc with some 80 on it. It's looking really nice. Not all distorted. It has a slight curve to it, but it's supposed to have that curve to it. Uh, but it came, came out really nice. Right down there, it's really ready to go. Got a little bit of work to do right here, all this brazing to clean up a little bit, but we still have that hole. And I haven't decided if I'm gonna try to repair that hole before it gets dipped or not, or just leave it and let the acid eat and let it show me what I need to replace, which is probably the direction I'm gonna go. But, uh, we're looking really good here, so we can start thinking about trying to fit up the panel and uh, where we need to trim it next. So, and we're probably just gonna do some rough trimming 
on here and then uh, let the car get dipped and then we'll do the final work later. But uh, we'll have to figure that out as we go, but that'll be our next step. Okay, I went and finished up, uh, you know, getting everything prepped. I got this corner cleaned up. I had all that brazing in there to clean out. Uh, did a little extra cut here. We're gonna do a butt weld down in here and across here, that panel is short over here. It doesn't reach uh, far enough. So we're gonna have to do a butt weld or I'll add on to it and take that out. But we'll do that once the car comes back from being dipped. And I cleaned all this up, got those buttons ground off uh, and I hammered and dolly that whole thing so it's nice and flat. And then I went ahead and got the rest of that off there. We're saving that little piece just like on the other end and that's gonna uh, attach to the quarter panel. So we are just about ready to drop that panel in there. Now, like I said earlier, we're not installing it. We're gonna get it fitted up and clamped on this side. So when I go to do this quarter panel, I have uh, some frame of reference. So let's go ahead and fit it up and talk about that panel a little bit. It uh, turns out it wasn't the greatest panel but for the price and the speed they got it to me, you know, I think it's gonna be okay. Okay, before we start fitting this panel up, let's just talk about its shortcomings. Now, I have no problem trimming a panel and, uh, you know, taking some of the flange off, and that's what I had to do right here. It was sticking down a good half inch, and that has to be a flush piece because this actually lays right on inside there. That's not a big deal. This piece over here, um, it's too short. Uh, the other side measures an inch and a half. This side barely measures uh, an inch and an eighth. So it falls short over on where the pinch weld is or where the recess is. So that's, that's a problem. Another issue is from this corner, which is right where the molding turns, it goes up by the sail panel. From this corner to this corner on the factory, it's exactly 14 inches. This one falls under 14 inches, uh, not an eighth, probably 3.30 seconds. So, uh, you know, we're gonna have to build that up a little bit. It's gotta be, you know, match, you know, on both sides. So we, we don't want it short on this and short in on that end. It has to be flush over here where the window sits and then, and the molding, and then this, we can build that up a little bit. But, uh, you know, for the price, uh, you know, this thing is 20 gauge. Uh, the factory steel is closer to 18 gauge. But my biggest complaint about this panel is right here. Now, you guys can see this lip right here, I don't know if you can tell, but that's got at least a half inch flange sticking on it. Well, the factory, this is the same piece right here. Well, you can tell it's tipped over. See that? So it's got a nice beaded rolled edge on here. Well, now I have to cut along this whole thing and I need to tip that over carefully without distorting this and making it look worse. It's got some stamp lines in it already but we have to cut that to the perfect uh, width and then tip that over carefully all the way down to get a nice beaded rolled edge like that. Like I said, I don't mind cutting flanges and doing some other stuff, but when I got to finish a panel for them, you know, that, uh, that seems like they kind of went, you know, lazy on it. And, uh, but it was considerably cheaper than a lot of the other ones and they got it to me quick. So, uh, you know, you get what you pay for really in these things. And it came from Taiwan, so, uh, you know, uh, you have to uh, really be careful when you're on the sites, uh, read the reviews. Uh, most of the pictures don't get close enough so you can see what it actually looks like. So if you're concerned, I would call the number and talk to them and ask them straight up, hey, is this this, it doesn't have that, you know, that kind of thing. Because uh, otherwise you get stuck with a piece of sheet metal, you're gonna have to rework pretty hard. All right, let's see how she fits. Now it drops in pretty good. Let me bring the camera around and I'll try to show you what's going on here. Okay, so we've got a pretty good line right here. Um, it's touching here, it needs to, that side needs to go forward a little bit, you know, to get everything square, but it's not looking too bad. It's a little high here and it does need to come backwards a little bit. Uh, I need to trim that flange, it's bumping into right here, so it's causing it not to be able to slide back. So I wanna do a little trimming and I wanna you know, kinda get it to fit as good as possible. I want it to sit down right here, even though we're gonna make cuts later on, we're not gonna do any of the final cuts right now. I want it so it lays down uh, so I can clamp this up underneath. I'm gonna clamp those two uh, flanges together and get this thing squared up as best as possible, probably clamp it somewhere along here 
uh, so it's in place when I start hanging that quarter panel this is going to be my guide really this is going to you know help me get it right so uh, it's not looking bad here the gap is a little big and that's because the flange on this piece is kind of bent out I've already bent it in a little bit I need to bend it a little bit more uh, so it matches the sail panel flange so um, that's my next step probably and I'm going to trim a little bit on the underside down inside here where it fits where the weather strip goes so let me take care of that real quick and then we're going to test fit it again we'll have it on and off uh, you guys know how it is I'll have it on and off here five or six times before I mean even close so uh, let me knock that out real quick and then we're going to take a final look at it okay guys looking pretty good except for that dent right there yikes so uh, it's sitting really tight up against the sail panel and it's looking really good. You see that right there? It's sitting a little high up here, but I can trim and get that to sit down the rest of the way. I do have it clamped to the sail panel underneath. So it's pulled up against there about as tight as it's gonna get. So it's looking pretty good. I can still do some uh, manipulation of the sheet metal to get that seam to be just perfect, which I will do later. It is sitting too high back here because we haven't trimmed off that sheet metal to let it sit down all the way. But uh, we've got it left to right and the angle this way just about perfect. So that allows me to use it as a gauge when I put the quarter panel back on over there, which will be done before the car leaves to go to get dipped. So uh, this is uh, really how to get these panels off. Now, there is one other option. If you guys don't want to remove your whole panel, you can trim it right here. So it's rusted out right in here, right? So you can actually buy this panel and cut it off all along there, you know, and just cut uh, your rusted part out and fit the piece back in there, just, you know, plug weld it along and then weld that whole length. The problem with that is, guys, this is really thin sheet metal and you cannot get a hammer and dolly up in there because that inner brace, right? So you can't hammer and dolly your weld. It's gonna pucker down. You're gonna end up with a bunch of body filler along there. Um, if you're really good with a TIG welder, um, you could probably pull it off. MIG welder, I would never try it. That's just way too much flat sheet. Look at all the sheet metal out here. This thing could oil can on you, just, you know, it looked like the Sahara Desert, you know. So uh, if you're really good, sure, but uh, I wouldn't do it. So it's easier for me to pull the panel off altogether and then look for other rust and other damage. But it is an option if you guys want to give it a shot. Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on Project Ruby, getting the filler panel cut out and uh, the other one partially fitted. It's still got a long way to go. I hope uh, by me showing this, if you have a rusted out, if you've got a GMA body, you probably, it's probably rusted back here unless it's already been repaired. And it's, it's kind of daunting to figure out how to get that thing out of there. So I hope this video helps you along the way. This is the way I do it. There could be a better way, but this will it, you saw it, it works for me. You cut the bulk of it out of your way and then just make the part where the spot weld is super thin. Then you just work on that little by little. And before you know it, you're all the way around and you haven't destroyed or bent up a bunch of other stuff. And that's the big deal. You don't want to bend up your mating flanges too bad. I mean, you can tweak them a little bit. You don't want to get them all tweaked because when you go to put your new panel on, nothing lines up and then you don't know where you're at. You get lost. So um, I'm really happy to get this on here. It's one more step closer to getting this quarter panel on, which is my ultimate goal because I'm running out of time to get that car up and get it dipped. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.